Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Can't say good night. According to where you're located at, God bless everyone. This is our Kingdom Expectations, and I'm the senior pastor, Apostle Dr. Antonio E. Wright, also known as Doc. This is our Tuesday night Bible study, and we're dealing with the Holy Spirit and his gifts. The Holy Spirit and his gifts. So we're going to give it a few moments for it to come up on Facebook. Hello, Astrid. Good morning. How are you doing? Uh, to come up on Facebook here, and I want to look at it on my iPad as well, because periodically on my phone, I miss conversations. I'm kind of slow, trying to catch up, but I get there. Hey, Dr. Leo, it is morning time in Africa. Am I correct? God bless you, sir. Okay, Facebook now has me on, and we're live and in Technicolor. So, tonight, again, hey, Sister Tanya. We want to talk about the Holy Spirit and his gifts, and I got my notes all ripped up pieces of paper, and we're going to do the best we can to get everything together. Amen, amen, amen. What's up, Deacon Jerry? Uh, so look, y'all keep us in prayer. You know, we're coming up pretty soon in May uh, to be uh, with the conference with Dr. Rick. God bless you, Deacon Jerry, Deacon Gary, all you guys that are on. Uh, so keep us in prayer. Uh, April the 28th, we'll be on the uh, radio station, Kingdom Talk radio station, the Filipino radio station. Hey, Dr. Carolyn, keep us in prayer with that. Uh, we were blessed to be with my baby sister on Holy Living Podcast. That's W-H-O-L-L-Y, Holy Living Podcast, Dr. Jasmine Spencer. We were on there with her the other day, but you can still pull the podcast up and see it. Hey, Z, I had the opportunity today. Today I shared uh, some information on Easter. <laughs> I had to do it. Uh, I got some positive feedback, so that was good. I didn't get nobody really talking negative, which was always great. Not that it matters. I told everybody this is just study. So, you know, research and make sure that I'm not fabricating, and I do not fabricate. Uh, I just want to teach the truth. It's kind of like the Bible. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Good morning, Pamela. Didn't say anything about seeking heaven. It says, seek ye first the kingdom. I probably said that wrong earlier, but seek ye first the kingdom. And as we seek the kingdom, Adam didn't lose heaven. Adam lost the kingdom. And because of our relationship with Jesus Christ, accepting him as our Lord and Savior and believing who he is, uh, we now have access or we have keys to the kingdom. Uh, now, uh, again, I'm going to share this, and I, I want you to understand and pay very close attention uh, in reference to some of the things. I had another conversation with some ladies today. In reference to some, some of the things I shared with you on Saturday night as far as uh, 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 certain vices, if you will, I need you to understand. And I mentioned something about marijuana and, and alcohol and wine. It's all good. Uh, everything God made is good. But I want you to understand this. Everything is lawful, but everything is an expedient. So always be mindful of what's expedient for you and take it like that. It's all good. Uh, just be careful. There's some things I don't do because it's not expedient. It's lawful, but it's not expedient because it's my choice. And all that being said, we want to talk tonight about, uh, is it scriptural to tarry for the Holy Ghost? Now, when we speak of tarrying for the Holy Ghost, we're not talking about the other gifts of the Holy Ghost. We're talking about the gift of speaking in unknown tongues. Uh, and as we, 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 we shared last week that these are gifts from God. You just receive it. Uh, and, and what is it? So the Bible teaches us when we speak in an unknown tongue, we're speaking mysteries in the heavenly realm that only God and our spirit comprehend. Uh, now, you can ask God for the interpretation of that tongue if you so desire, and he'll give it. But as I alluded to my particular testimony, I didn't want to keep asking God for what I was ministering or speaking because if I know it, then the enemy knows it. And if he knows it, then it's going to look like it's taking a while for things to happen. See, which is another purpose of the gift of speaking in tongues. It's a prayer language, a heavenly language between you and God. Uh, so people get it kind of confused that, okay, the Bible says there's supposed to be an interpretation. That is the gift of diverse tongues. In other words, that is when the gift of tongue is being used in a form of ministering to someone or ministering one to another. At that time, you need an interpreter. But other than that, when you go to a church service and everybody's worshiping in the spirit and or speaking in unknown tongues, they're worshiping and edifying themselves. 
uh, which is the difference between corporate prayer and intercessory prayer. When we have an intercessory prayer, what's up, C-Rights? When we have an intercessory prayer, we're normally in the building, we're all praying, and we're interceding in the spirit realm. And some of those are interceding, naturally speaking, if you will. Uh, and then the spirit of God moves. Now, even then, it does not mean just because you go off in tongues, it does not mean necessarily that God has a message. It just means that you edifying yourself. Uh, there's a difference in the atmosphere when everybody collectively are, are praying in tongues. There's a difference in the atmosphere when God wants to speak. And sometimes we get carried away thinking because we've been caught up in the spirit that God has spoken to us. That's not always, that's not always so. Uh, 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 and I believe that's in my notes even tonight about waiting on the Lord. It's good to wait, but then there's sometimes we wait. God does not necessarily give us a message for the body. He could be talking directly to us. Amen. Uh, so again, and I had a great time today. I want to thank uh, those of you that are members of the body uh, of, of Kingdom Expectations, my family uh, that left me some good, some good notes on the, the little thing that I taught today on Easter. <laughs> yeah, I'm still in it. I just felt, I don't want to use the terminology compelled. I felt like I needed to share it so people would have an understanding of how we teach and what we believe. That, that's, that's right, Pamela. Just be silent after the Spirit come and let him do what he's going to do. Amen to that, girl. You got it. Uh, so we're, we're grateful again. And y'all keep me in prayer. Uh, I haven't done one of my little leadership things uh, for, for a period of time because on Fridays, I've been delivering food. And so we might try to cap one of those in like 15 minutes every other Thursday. But that being said, let's go to the Lord in prayer, please, shall we? So we can get this in and I can let you guys go back to looking at television or whatever else you do on Tuesday night when you're not in church. Father, we bless you, we glorify you, we magnify you, we thank you, God, as always, for this opportunity to be able to bring forth the bread of life, to teach on the Holy Spirit and his gifts. We pray, God, that the ears of the hearer might be open, that they might receive the word of God, and that that word might be watered by the Holy Spirit, that it might reproduce unto you some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And I, as your son, as I share the word of God, I pray, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight and that thou bestow upon me revelation, knowledge, spiritual wisdom, and divine understanding of your word, that I, you might be glorified in everything that I say this evening, that as I decrease, the Holy Spirit will increase on the inside. In Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Hey, baby girl, my wife's on. God bless you, baby. So look, the thought for tonight as we go into these series is, is it scriptural to tarry for the Holy Ghost? Is it scriptural to tarry for the Holy Ghost? So there are still some. Now, some of us that are over 60 uh, remember back in the day that you had to wait. Uh, they would have you tarry for the Holy Ghost. In other words, you sit up there uh, while the church mother was around you, uh, hollering, pray, 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 pray. And you have to sit there until you finally got filled with the Holy Ghost after hours. Uh, and you'd be spitting and crying and choking. And they said, okay, you're about to have it. No, actually, you was gasping for breath. But that's a whole other subject. And there are still some people that believe today that you can't get it all at the same time. And then, as we said early, uh, uh, last week, and my wife even alluded to it, and I've always shared that some of the problem is you trying to figure out how it's going to sound. Or are you going to sound like my wife? Are you going to sound, am I, am I going to sound like my husband? Or am I going to sound like the pastor? Am I going to sound like the prophetess? Or how am I going to sound? Uh, we don't know. Oh, Terry, Pam, that's T-A-R-R-Y. T-A-R-R-Y. T-A-R-R-Y, which means to wait. Uh, because some people believe you can't get the Holy Ghost at one time. They believe you have to wait uh, for hours uh, or for days. And so what we're teaching is that's, that's unscriptural. Uh, they did it in the past, and it was still unscriptural. Kind of like me talking about this. It's just something that was unscriptural. So it's Terry, meaning T-A-R-R-Y. Terry means to wait on something to come, and, and you don't have to do that. So that's what we're teaching tonight, the fact that you don't have to wait uh, to re to get the Holy Ghost. Uh, <laughs> yeah, as Deacon Garrett just put up there, that's how they used to say, call him, call him, call him, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah, you know, you be studying and everything and don't have nothing. Uh, and and that's, that's my point tonight uh, because there's still some that believe that to a certain extent even today. 
Uh, so what I want you to understand, again, I'm, I'm going to do with my notes because if not, I'll be here all night. Uh, most of the people that believe that, they, they literally use Luke 24 and 49. Now, that goes back to me talking about Easter today and, you know, time and clocks and things of that nature that's already in Scripture. But what happens is we, we take it wrong. We take it out of context. Uh, and we have to be mindful of that. So they use Luke 24 and 49, and they also use Acts chapter 1 verse 4 to support their particular claim. Uh, and basically, some people have used this as what they call a Bible formula to receiving the Holy Spirit. I try to tell people, the only thing you got to do to receive the Holy Spirit is receive it and open your mouth. You, you can't get it closed like this. Now he ain't coming. You got to open your mouth. I used to tell people, just act like you're drinking water. Open your mouth and drink in and let him come out. So Luke 24 and 49 says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Then in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, it says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So we have to understand, and how I'm teaching, the fact is that tarrying, waiting, is not a formula for receiving the Holy Ghost. Now, it is true that Jesus made these statements. Uh, he made both of these statements. He made them to his disciples uh, before the day of Pentecost. However, if these verses were a formula for receiving the Holy Ghost, we would not have any right to take the word Jerusalem out of the text. In other words, Jesus told the disciples not only to wait or to tarry, but he said to wait in Jerusalem. So he didn't say wait in Bethlehem. He didn't say wait in, Ter in Jericho. Why? Because it was necessary for them to wait in Jerusalem. Now, why was it necessary for them to wait in Jerusalem? Because they had to be there for the Feast of Pentecost. Remember, everything God does is pattern. That's why they had to wait. Uh, uh, they was waiting for the day of Pentecost to come, not waiting for the gift to come for the day of Pentecost. Because now remember, he had already breathed on them the Holy Ghost in, uh, I think it's John chapter 20. He breathed on them the Holy Ghost. Now we can actually say, good morning, Elder Kathy. We can actually say that the church began in John chapter 20 because that's when Jesus first breathed on them the Holy Ghost. But now what they're waiting for is not the breathing on. Uh, the Ephesians talks about we are sealed with the Holy Spirit and his promise. That's when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are sealed. But then there's a baptismal that comes after that. And that's when the gifts of the Holy Ghost, you receive those gifts. Uh, the gift of speaking on unknown, unknown tongues, the gift of faith, the gift of laying on the hands, the gift of working on the miracles. That is a separate thing from the reception of at salvation. But you can get it all at the same time. I've known plenty of people who have accepted the Lord as their Lord and Savior in the altar call, and bam, the preacher laid hands on them, and they received the gift of the Holy Ghost, just like that. Uh, I've seen people come out of the baptismal water and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost speaking in unknown tongues, just going off. I mean, it's just one of them things. And everybody receives it differently. Whole nother subject. We're going to keep on going. So, of course, again, they were waiting for the day of Pentecost to come because that's when the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the church. And that's, you know, so you, you said, well, dang, uh, Doc, you said he breathed on them and the church could have started in June in John chapter 20, which is true. Some theologians think that and then some say this. So, you know, we got that double thought there of which way to go. Either way, the church was still started. And that's really all that matters on that uh, particular thing. Uh, so they had to prepare themselves. I'm sorry. They were not tearing or, 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 or waiting in order to get ready or to prepare themselves to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, if that had been true, then the Bible would have made this statement. It would have said, when they were fully ready, the Holy Ghost came. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says in Acts 2 and 1, it says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, that is what they were waiting for, the day of Pentecost. Not to prepare to speak in tongues, not to prepare for the gifts. Once they had Christ, they was already prepared. They had to wait for the day 
A Pentecost. That's the, that's that's the, that's the that's the that's the most important part right there. Acts chapter two verses one through four. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen, somebody. Uh, uh, so again, uh, then reading in Acts chapter 8, notice that when Peter and John went down to pray for the Samaritans to receive the Holy Spirit, there is not the slightest hint or suggestion that Peter and John taught the Samaritans to tarry or to wait before they could be filled with the Holy Spirit. In uh, Acts chapter 8, verses 14 through 17, it reads, Now when the apostles were at Jerusalem, and they heard uh, that Samaria had received the word of God. They sent unto them Peter and John, who when they would come down, pray for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So they had gotten the baptismal. Uh, after accepting Christ your Lord and Savior, you, you, you receive baptism. Baptism is, is, is a, a form of recognizing you have now become born again. Amen. You went in, they used to say you went in a, uh, no, they say you, somebody say you go in a dry devil, become a wet devil. But no, it shows your, your death and your resurrection into a new life. You become, you're a born again believer. Uh, and that's, that's what the baptismal uh, symbolizes, sim, symbolizes. Y'all know what I'm saying. Uh, so, so let's go. Um, did I read Acts chapter 14? No, I'm going to read it now. Nope, I done read it. So basically, see, I'm, I'm, I'm getting caught. Hey, Maria, how you doing? That's right. You and Mario were sick when we did the baptismal. My bad. We got to get y'all in the water. We'll work on that. I'll find a place. We'll get y'all in the water before the, before, the, before the summer's out. How's that sound? Yep, got to do that. Uh, so the infilling or the baptism of the Holy Spirit has already been given to the church on the day of Pentecost as a free gift, as a free gift to teach people to tear for the baptism of the Holy Spirit only produces doubt and confusion in those candidates who desire to receive the gift. Now, uh, right. And outward, there you go, Dr. Carolyn. Thank you. An outward testimony to what happened inside. And, you know, I'm thinking my brain, my brain is going too many different places now because, you know, I remember when I gave my life to the Lord on 4th of July, 1983. And then I, then I was filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in unknown tongues uh, several days later. I didn't get baptized for several months um, because it was during the summer. I was home on leave uh, and I, there was nowhere for me to get baptized because I was, you know, getting ready to be shipped out. Shortly after, I, I think I gave my life to the Lord on the 4th of July, I left country, what we call the state, um, um, uh, what happened was when I left and went to Germany, I got baptized several months later by the time I hit Germany. Cause once I got to Germany and found the church that the Lord was leading me to, I then got baptized. Now I was already flowing in the Holy ghost, already speaking in unknown tongues. The gifts of God was already in operation. I just hadn't hit the water, uh, but we're going to make sure that we get Maria and Mario in the water of uh, this summer. Anyway, so let's move on with this. Um, <laughs> So to teach people to tear for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it really what it does is it only produces doubt and confusion in the candidates. Uh, uh, Pam says she's remember her day, 12, 16, 2017. That's it. You can't, there's some days that you don't forget. That's excellent. That is excellent. Um, so to teach people to wait or to tarry on the Holy Ghost is nothing in the world but a combination of works and unbelief. That's, that's all it is, a combination of works and unbelief. So I'm not saying, as I, I said this earlier, I'm not saying that tearing before the Lord is always unscriptural or waiting before the Lord is unscriptural. Of course, I believe in waiting before the Lord, uh, and I believe in waiting before the Lord in prayer. Uh, and I've taught that in prayer and praise and in worship. There's always good times and there's seasons of times that we wait on the Lord. Uh, we've done it in our church. It's kind of hard to do it now once we start producing stuff and putting it on television and social media and things like that. It's kind of kind of hard uh, until we're able to get it to live stream in our own self through our web page uh, because, you know, Facebook will cut off certain things and they don't believe in certain things. We're not going to get into all that tonight. Uh, so once we have the freedom, then there comes time when we're live or heck, if the Lord decides to put us on TV. Uh, there's that live time that you can just spend time and just worship God. And there's nothing like waiting on God. 
in the midst of a service or waiting on God at home when you're in prayer. You have that good prayer time with the Lord and it's like you can't get up, you can't move. And he's not talking, but you just feel that presence of God. You feel that presence of the Holy Spirit that's right there. And you don't really want to move because you think he's getting ready to say something. And if you wait, he's going to say something. And it feels so good. But anyway, uh, so many times, even in our prayer meetings back in the day, uh, we'd spend time waiting on the Lord. And that's how I taught him. Uh, I think at one time, I think the longest we might have waited is about an hour. I think one time we really just sat quiet before the Lord for about an hour. And then, bam. He just spoke. You know, he ministered. If I remember that, that the one time it happened, well, most of the time it happens, he, he ministered through my wife. And, you know, the wait was worth the wait because he gave us a direct word, uh, a direct blessing, and direct direction. Uh, so waiting is good. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying don't wait, but I'm saying you don't have to wait to be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's already done. He did that back at Pentecost. Now you got to do is receive it. Uh, so waiting and praying, crying out and agonizing to receive the Holy Ghost, that's what you don't have to do. You don't have to go through all that to receive it. It's already your gift. All you got to do is just take it. As you can see, I'm flipping my notes in my paper because it's all ripped up. <laughs> so in reading through the 28 chapters of the book of Acts, one might suppose that the particular events that we discussed, uh, and we've done this before, uh, happened over a period of a few days or a few weeks or just a very few years. But however, we have to be mindful of the fact that the events in the book of Acts cover a number of years. And now the first particular account we're going to deal with that occurred in Samaria. So in Acts chapter 8, verses 5 through 8, in dealing with the Samaritan, the Samaritan uh, um, believers, Acts chapter 8, verses 5 through 8, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed and there was great joy in the city. So now here's what it says in, in Acts uh, uh, chapter 8, verse 8. It says there was great joy in that city. Now understand, joy is not necessarily a characteristic of being filled with the Holy Ghost. Why? It was, you know, because these Samaritans who heard the word Preach had great joy before they were filled with the Holy Ghost. So they had joy before. So just having joy is not a sign that you have the Holy Ghost because they had joy before. You can have joy before you get filled with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, and you can also have joy afterwards. It is joyous to be saved. Once you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you understand what the kingdom has now planned for you, you go get happy. It's better than go, it's more than just going to heaven, it's access to the fullness of God. Amen. Signs, wonders, gifts, callings, all of that. So you're going to be happy, but it's joyous to be healed and to enjoy the blessings of God. So we have all these different variations of joy. So if we look at Acts chapter 8, verses 12 through 15, and then verses 17 through 20, as I read, uh, but when they believe Philip, God bless you, uh, Pastor Carlos, First Lady Lawson. Um, but when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon, the sorcerer himself, believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, stuck on stupid, leaning on dumb, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, you know, Peter going to get him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. That was a crazy move. So it seems that Philip had a glorious revival in Samaria. And while Philip was there, hundreds of people have, from what the word says, hundreds of people were saved. And, and, and scores of people were also healed during Philip's revival. And all these folks received the Holy Ghost. It says in Acts 8, 17, then laid they their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Now notice this, that all of the Samaritans received the Holy Ghost without waiting, without praying or agonizing. They received without exception or disappointment. When, he, when they accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, they got healed, set free, and delivered. And then he laid hands on them, and they received 
the Holy Ghost. You know, I tell people now, receive your healing. Well, I got to pray and bind and do this. Just it's, Healing is yours. Just receive your healing. Even tonight, receive your healing. Amen. We had an opportunity when I was with Booby's house today, and there was a, a young lady and her mother-in-law that was there, and the young lady wants to have children. Hello, Elder Gloria. So, of course, Tanisha told her, uh, Booby told her the testimony about me laying hands on people and, uh, and, and, and they, they giving birth. So I said, I ain't got to touch you. Just receive it. It's a gift. So I say, receive your three births, your three children. She said, huh? I said, your three children. Receive your three children. I'm believing God. She's going to receive three children. Amen. Uh, that's her desire. It's a gift. It's already. She said, well, I have a medical problem. I said, well, receive your healing. When you have your children, you're going to be healed at the same time. I said, just receive it. Amen, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. That's how God works. So let's, let's go to uh, uh, Cornelius in his house, if you don't mind. The word gives us another account of people getting saved and filled with the Holy Spirit without tearing or waiting. Uh, 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 um, reading, Acts, reading in Acts chapter 10 and 11, we see how an angel appeared to Cornelius and told him to send to Joppa. And to inquire in the house of a certain individual for Simon Peter, who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. That's Acts chapter 11, verse 14. Now, we have to understand at this particular time, neither Cornelius nor his household was saved. You know, <laughs> Cornelius believed, but he wasn't saved. How can I put this? Cornelius believed in God because he was of the Italian band. And he had Jewish slaves, and he built a little temple, if you will, for them, for them to have their prayers. But he had not heard the salvation in Christ. That's what I want to say. He didn't know about the salvation in Christ. He knew about the law. He trusted the law, but he didn't know about the grace. See, you got to know about the grace. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't know about the grace. But now, when he had this dream, uh, when the angel came, he said, look, I need you to go get, I need you to go get my boy, uh, and, and get my boy Simon Peter, and go, go to this crib, and Simon, Simon Peter's going to be there. I need you to ask Simon Peter to come, because when Simon Peter comes, I got something for you. I got, I got something for you. So it says that uh, uh, neither Cornelius nor his household was saved. They were Gentiles who had become Jewish proselytes. A person can't be saved without hearing the gospel. See, I got to stay with my notes. Those of Cornelius' household didn't know that Jesus had died for the sins of mankind and was raised for the dead, raised from the dead for our justification. They had no clue about that. They became Jewish proselytes under the law. Therefore, Peter preached to them about Jesus' death, his burial, and his resurrection. You know, we used to call that the Roman road. Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Uh, they believed the gospel message, Romans 10, 9 and 10. Uh, that thou shalt believe in thy heart and confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, that key word believe, then you shall be saved. And they were born again while Peter was preaching. Now, check this out. They believed the gospel message, and they were born again. And while Peter was preaching in Acts 11 and 14, then they received the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues before Peter even finished the message. So in other words, while Peter is ministering the word of the kingdom, while Peter is ministering the word of the kingdom of God, uh, of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ Jesus, they immediately began speaking in unknown tongues. Now, that's what we call putting it all together in one piece of cake, right? Uh, look at Acts chapter 10, verses 44 through 45. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word, and, and they of the circumcision which believed, mean, we're talking about the Jewish Christians now, were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, see, when you really study the Acts of the Apostles, as I've taught this in church several times, the Acts of the Apostles is really a, a, a paralegal piece of paperwork that was going before Paul because the Jews didn't believe the Gentiles could be filled with the Holy Ghost. They didn't believe the Gentiles. They thought it was just a Jewish thing. They didn't think that the Gentiles. So what is one of the signs to let them know that the Gentiles have been born again, and that was speaking in unknown tongues. Once they heard the Gentiles speaking in unknown tongues, they was through. They said, oh, snap, they can get this too. See, that was a whole brand new thing. That's speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is not for the believer. Speaking in tongues is for the unbeliever, meaning it's for the believer as a gift, but it also shows the unbeliever the truth that it really works.
Something to think about. Just something to think about. So notice that while Peter was still speaking, Cornelius and his household were not only saved, but were filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke with tongues without waiting, agonizing, or struggling. They didn't have to tarry. They didn't have to wait for anything. We can get it too. You already got it, Pam. What you talking about? <laughs> Don't you have it? Yeah, you do. Don't make me think that. Yeah, girl, what you talking about? You put the birthday up there. 2017. Tell my, and the rest of us that don't have it or the rest of them that don't have it, they can get it. See, check this out. Now, here's my stupidity. Not my ignorance, my stupidity. I would love, because remember I shared with you guys, you know, I still believe God for all the gifts. I want everything God has for me. I would love to be sitting in church on a Saturday night, right? Teaching the kingdom of God, whether it be on prayer, whether it be on the Holy Spirit, whatever the Lord has me teach. And someone comes in the church who has not been saved or who has been born again, but has not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I would love to be sitting in church teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden, wham, somebody gets filled with the Holy Ghost and just jumps up and begins speaking in unknown tongues. Man, I would love that. I mean, I done seen healings. I done seen a whole bunch, uh, but I would love for that. I know you do, girl. I would love for that. I would love for something like that. Man, I would love, because I want all of God. Everything God got, I want. That's just that's just that. I, everything that God want, everything that God has, I want. I want to see it. You know, when I've seen the, I think we've seen blind eyes, right? We have seen blind eyes, right? Dr. Curtis. Um, we've seen bones. We watched the neck that was broken heal back together in less than thirty in less than two minutes, really, by the time they did the second X-ray. We've seen miracles. We've had people that have been uh, barren, their wounds was barren have a floodgate of children. Oh my God, my God, my God. Uh, we've seen people break addictions, uh, alcohol addiction, cigarette addiction. We've seen it. I want to see somebody. Yep. We've seen cancer healed. Amen. We don't see, man, we don't see some stuff in the church. I'm trying to tell you, I want, that's the, the next thing is somebody raised from the dead. And I want to see somebody walk in there and don't know Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden, wham, let it hit them all at one time. Y'all would have to catch me because I'll probably be worshiping God so hard, I'll be running down 95. Anyway, let's go. <laughs> Notice that while Peter was still speaking, Cornelius in his household, I'm reading again, was not only saved, but were filled with the Holy Ghost and spake with tongues without waiting, agonizing, struggling. So how did the Jewish believers, again, my notes, I got to go back to them. How did the Jewish believers know the gift of the Holy Ghost was poured out on the Gentiles? For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God, Acts 10, 46. So how do we know that somebody is filled with the Holy Ghost? We'll hear them speak in an unknown tongue. You know, people took me, they told me, mm, that ain't glorifying God. The Bible says, make a joyful noise, all ye saints. And you know, even when you're worshiping God, you can't go, mm. somebody said, well, I'm just quiet. But you ain't worshiping there. You're embarrassed. Has he done anything for you? You'd almost holler. If the Lord's been good to you, you don't have a problem with shouting hallelujah, glory to God, thank you, Jesus. If he's really been good, but you be like, no, 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 no. You, you embarrassed. You, you don't really love God. If you, if you love God, you're going to shout to the rooftop, let's go. Uh, so we then make a mistake by thinking that things have to be done in a certain cut and dried way. It doesn't have to be. God doesn't have any cut, dried out methods. While Peter was yet preaching, these Gentiles received the Holy Ghost. So if we look at a lot of Pentecostal or charismatic church people, want everybody to follow the same formula, which is why we're kingdom expectations. They want everybody to follow the same formula. They want to cut everyone's experience out with the same cookie cutter, so to speak. And it don't, it don't work like that. And, and, and again, what happened last week going to happen this week. You know, I try to tell people, when you go to church, you pray, and the, the Lord uses you this week. Uh, if you're not in that five-fold ministry realm, he might not necessarily use you next week. And can I be honest with you? Even if you're in that realm, that one do rob song ain't going to work next week because it worked last week. It worked last week, but that don't mean it's going to move the Holy Spirit this week. You know, it's got, you got to always be free, free flowing. You know, you know, I just, I could be in the gym and before I know it, I done got caught up and I'm prophesying, <clears throat> bit my lip. I done got caught up and I'm prophesying. Everybody Jim look at me like I'm crazy. And I done start ministering. I done did that at, 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 at Herbalife meetings. I'm sitting up there talking to somebody about Herbalife. And next thing you know, if you've been around me, I done start ministering the word. Now I got a group of people around me. That's the Holy Ghost. 
He moves when he want to move, how he want to move. And we try to make it, we try to make it conditional. We, we try to make it, uh, 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 uh happen this way. So it got to happen that way. No, he don't work like that. No, when he moves, you need to move just like that. Let's go back. Uh, so now we're dealing with Saul of Tarsus. Tarsus, we got Paul who laid hands on the, on the folks in Acts chapter 19. Of course, Paul was previously known as Saul of Tarsus. Uh, this is kind of the kind of his experience of receiving the Holy Ghost is found in Acts uh, chapter 9. So in Acts chapter 9, how much time I got? Okay, I got to hurry up. In Acts chapter 9, verse 11 and 12, it reads, And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight. And inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. So in Ananias, when he got there, this is uh, Acts 9 and 17, and also 1 Corinthians 14 and 18. Acts 9 and 17, Ananias said to Saul, Jesus has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and 18, and Saul received the Holy Spirit right then. We know that Paul received the Holy Spirit because later he said, I thank my God that I speak with tongues more than all of you guys. You know, that's my, my thing. So if we look at that, notice in this particular passage of scripture that there was no suggestion of the need for Saul to tarry awake to be filled with the Holy Ghost. When Ananias laid hands on him, wham, it was right there. He received his sight. And he also was able to speak in unknown tongues as the Spirit of God gives him the utterance. There's no, 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 no suggestion that Saul had to wait or tarry for the Holy Ghost. Saul was immediately filled with the Holy Spirit when Ananias laid hands on him. It is most probable that Saul didn't know a thing in the world about the Holy Ghost. We know that he probably didn't know anything about the Holy Ghost because he was killing Christians. And by the time he got to them, they, they probably didn't even know anything about the Holy Ghost. They probably just changed. But we don't know. That's just speculation. But he was killing them. He had time to hear nothing. He just moving. He didn't know what was going on. And wham, God got him. <laughs> so we see that uh, <laughs> the Holy Ghost came upon him as Ananias laid hands on him. But Ananias obeyed the Lord and Saul was immediately filled with the Holy Spirit. So here we go again with the obedience. So I deal with obedience as far as people even speaking in unknown tongues. Because a lot of times, you know, you tell people to open the mouth and God tell them to open their mouth to be like this. So I expect God to fill you with the Holy Ghost with your mouth closed. Can I share something with you? He uses your vocal cords. So in order for him to use your vocal cords, your mouth has to be open. That's why I was telling people, I like you drinking water. And I normally lay hands on her right there. I say, I like you drinking water. And then it just flow. My wife just lay hands on it. It's over. See, if you don't get it then, that's because you're doubting or you're afraid or you expect it to come a certain kind of way. Well, you just got to be free and just let it go. Amen. Move on. Don't mind if I do. Uh, so then we have the, uh, the Ephesian disciples. And ask, how much, how much more I got? I need to get out of here tonight. Okay, I got a couple more pages. So let me. We'll be out of here by 8.32. Um, Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 3. Okay, Gary's giving a testimony, y'all. He tripped on yesterday afternoon, twisted his right knee. It was so painful last night, and today they left work early around 5 p.m. Aisha had to help him remove his shoes. Ice tonight with no results. Ten minutes ago, got to be more careful. Hold on, don't make me cry. Ten minutes ago, you said, receive your healing. And I responded by saying, I received my healing. Then I stood up to repair the toilet seat, and immediately I received my healing, and the pain was <laughs> Bless God, hallelujah. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about right there. You can't help but worship God when stuff like that happens. Man, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, son. Appreciate that. God is good, ain't he? That's all I know. That's all I know. Hallelujah to God be all the glory. Ain't nothing like a God like that when you can receive your healing right across the airwaves. God ain't nothing but the truth. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. See, I'm having a moment, and I'm going to try to keep going, but I'm having a moment. God is good. See, at least you paid attention because somebody else probably in that same state, they didn't want to, re didn't want to receive it. They wanted to take some medicine. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Pam says she's running. I'm about to take off myself. I got my warm-ups on. I can hit a lap. God is sure enough good. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's what I'm talking about. I got to take a drink off of that one. That's what I'm talking about. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good, especially right now. Amen, amen, amen. I'm going to try to continue on. I don't know how far I can go now. 
Thank you, son, for that testimony. God is good, man. Right before our very eyes, he received it, and the Lord spoke. Amen. <laughs> Pam, you are crazy. <laughs> okay, let's deal with uh, Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 3. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Ooh. Sorry, I'm having, I'm having a minute. <laughs> I thought about that. I thought about that song we used to sing back in the day. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. What a mighty God we serve. Ah. Add chapter, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. Woo. I'm gonna try. Acts chapter 19, uh, verses one through three. Yeah, man. Somebody need to read that testimony again. And take it to heart. Acts chapter 19, verse 1 through 3. And it came to pass. Now, who wouldn't go to church and serve a God like that? Huh? Who wouldn't go to a church where miracles are on the airwaves? The sound waves are just provoking miracles in the atmosphere. Huh? That's all I know. The sound waves of God is performing miracles in the atmosphere. We're in the atmosphere of the presence of God. <laughs> atmosphere. Acts chapter 19. I'm going to try my best. I got to get out of here. Acts chapter 19, verse 1 to 3. And it came to pass while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Uh, and he said unto them, unto what, unto what then were ye baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. That's the baptism of repentance, change of your mindset. Uh, then in Acts 19 and 6, we read, And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Uh, these folk at Ephesus had not heard about being filled with the Spirit uh, or speaking in tongues. Uh, but as soon as Paul laid hands on them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they spake with tongues. Every one of them was filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke, spoke with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. Without waiting, agonizing, struggling, or tearing. We have read from the New Testament every instance where people received the Holy Ghost over a 20-year period, and there have been op absolutely nothing at all in the Scriptures that even resemble what we call a tearing meeting or a waiting meeting in order to be filled with the Holy Ghost. In every single instance where a company of believers sought the Holy Spirit, everyone received right away. Not one went away disappointed because of failure to receive the Holy Spirit. So, so, so they were in acceptance. They was in, re, they was in receptors, receptivity. They was in, in, in a, a position of receiving the Holy Spirit. They was in a position of receiving the blessings of God. Just like with Deacon Garrett, he heard me say, receive your healing. He said, bless God, I receive my healing. And he stood up and he received his healing. That's just like now. So if I, you know, I, I say this, if there's anyone tonight, be it on social media, be it on podcasts, if we put it on podcasts, be it on a, 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 what they call them, a watch story, or what do y'all do them things? When you share it, you share it on your page. If there's anybody tonight that has a desire to be filled with the Holy Ghost, tonight I say receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in unknown tongues as your spirit. Gives just receive it in Jesus' name. It's yours for the taking. And it's his that he gave it. So just receive the baptism in the fullness of God and speaking in unknown tongues even now in Jesus' name. As we keep reading, uh, so <laughs> if we look at John chapter 7, Jesus talks about receiving the Holy Ghost. In John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So basically, Jesus was not talking here about salvation, because he said, speaking of salvation to the woman of Samaria in John 4 and 14, the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. So John 4 and 14 were refers to a well. John 7, 9 refers to a river. God, I love that. I could preach that right. 
refers to one refers to a well, one refers to a river. What was the river that Jesus was talking about in John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39? Well, he was talking about receiving, amen, give me about 10 more minutes. He was talking about receiving or being filled with the Holy Ghost. Also notice in, uh, Jesus said, come and drink in John 7, 37. Not come and shout, not come and pray. Again, I said, it's like drinking water. Uh, uh, come and praise, not come and praise, not come and sing and then go away empty. No, Jesus said, come and drink and out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. So now I just found out why I tell people to act like they're drinking water and just let the Holy Ghost flow out of them. So we make a mistake a lot of times by not just taking Jesus as his word. Jesus said, come and drink. That's what he said, John 7, 37. I tell you, you have to open your mouth and speak, and it's just like drinking. When you drink in, the Holy Spirit pours out. Amen, somebody. Also, how many people can drink and talk at the same time? You know, it's just some things you just got to look at. Have you ever tried to drink water, for example, and talk at the same time? Some things you just can't do. Uh, or can you drink and sing or drink and praise God at the same time? Of course, now, we need to understand that the Holy Spirit is present to give the utterance in other tongues, but you can't come and drink and speak your native language at the same time. So in other words, it's kind of like when uh, I never forget when Elder Anthony laid hands on me and I was just saying, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. hallelujah. That's all I was doing. I was gone, man. I was really gone. And he says, he says, uh, and he prayed for me. I, I can almost remember his words verbatim. He said, brother Tony would like to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost speaking in unknown tongues as the spirit gives him, as your spirit gives him the utterance. And father, I pray now. And I'm just saying, hallelujah, hallelujah. He says, Father, I pray now as I lay my hands on Brother Tony, he will not say anything in English. He will flow with the Spirit and say what the Spirit of God gives him to say. Man, when that boy put his hand on my head, another hallelujah didn't come out. You know, I told y'all a story. All I do, all I do, da, 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 da. That's all I, but I knew it was God. See, I, I just knew it was God. I could, I could feel it. I, I wasn't even in the car. You know, it's like I done left the building, you know. I done left the building. I was gone, man. And I did that for a couple of days. And eventually, the dialects came in. I can't do that too much. The dialects came in, but it was I kept doing it. I kept doing it. I kept praying. Even now, I just, I just pray. It's a gift. I can do it at any time. He wants you to receive that gift. I don't know why I'm so on that. Uh, uh, so let's go. So <laughs> when Jesus said, come and drink, amen, when he said, come and drink, I need you to understand something. That implies that you don't have the weight or terror to drink. How long does it take you to drink? Jesus said, it is just as easy to drink of the spirit that is to be filled with the spirit as it is to drink water or to be filled with water. In other words, if you're saved, you don't have to wait at all. That's my whole point. Notice another aspect of drinking water and being filled with water is it is something that you do, not something that the water does. It's something that you do, not something that the water does does. Amen. In other words, if you do your part, if you receive him, the Holy Spirit will do his part. The Holy Spirit will fill you up to overflowing and then you'll speak in tongues. But it is something that you have to do. You have to say, you have to open your mouth. You have to take in, drink in the Holy Spirit and he'll flow out. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm about to go, y'all. I'm, I'm doing as well as I can to sit here as much as possible. In Acts chapter 1, verses 8. Uh, so, of course, again, in finishing this up, I'm trying to rush now because I, I ain't got but a few moments and I need to get you guys out of here. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, Jesus said, come and drink, and when you drink of the Holy Spirit until you get full, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, the Holy Spirit. And Jesus promised that you will receive, see, this is the catch, you receive power. You receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Man, ain't nothing like that power. It ain't just power to live right and do right. It's power to influence, power to impact. Power to declare, power to decree, power to, to, to bind up, power to, 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 to break up, power to loose, power to lay hold, power to command things to happen. You receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Oh, God. Mm. Ha. Sorry about that. Ha. Man, I got to go. I got to hurry up. Acts 1 and 8. Uh, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnessing unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and in the othermost parts of the earth. And if we look at Acts 1 and 8, amplified, but you shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might 
when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends, the very bounds of the earth. <sighs> See, it's kind of funny. God doesn't need to send the power right now because if you receive the Holy Spirit, according to Acts 1 and 8, the power of God is already resident in you. You already got the power. You know, it's funny. I, I tease people all the time. I said, look, if you've been with me 90 days, you can teach Bible study. And they'd be like, no, I can't. Yes, you can because you got the power. Right. You, you have the power. So you can do it. You can do anything God says you can do. Amen. That's not my opinion. That's my fact. You have the power. Look, so let, 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 let me get out of here. So remember... <laughs> Paul said to the Ephesians, have you received the Holy Spirit? Acts 19 and 2. He didn't say, I've come here to pray that God will pour the Holy Ghost upon you. Think about it now. Think about it now. And the apostles in Jerusalem sent Peter and John down to Samaria so that they might lay hands on the Samaritan Christians to receive, Acts chapter 8, verse 14 through 17, the Holy Ghost. Notice that they didn't send them down there to pray that the Lord would send the power to the Samaritans. They said, do you receive it? Amen, Pamela. You have the power because God told you. Amen. It's, it's, it's a done. D-O-N-E. Done. D-E-A-L. Deal. Whoop. Over. In. Finish. You got it. ha ta ba she. You know what? I'm, I'm about to lose it. <laughs> I'm talking to myself. I'm about to lose it. You don't even understand. You can't buy the gift of the Holy Spirit any more than you can buy salvation. You don't do anything to merit the infilling of the Holy Spirit. It's a gift from God. In other words, babes in Christ can receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit just as well as more mature Christians can. Babes in Christ can move in this gift of the Holy Spirit. Again, I was a babe in Christ, man. I had just gotten saved. And I'm teaching adult Sunday school to people who have been in the, in the kingdom 10, 15, 20 years. Senior to me. I'm, I'm, I'm teaching Bible scholars, man, but it was the Holy Ghost. It was the power of the Holy Ghost that he gave me the bless me to be able to teach. And I started reading and studying, and he started teaching me. And the more I talked, the more he feel. The more I talked, the more he feel. The more I talked, the more he feel. See, you ever notice how sometimes you're reading, you don't get nothing because you're not giving it out. So when you start reading, you need to start sharing it with people. When you share with you, he give you more. When you share it, he give you more. When you share it, he give you more. You start talking to people, they'll be like, man, where'd you get that from? Well, I just read the Bible, and my pastor's been teaching it. And obviously, it's the truth, because look at my life. And you share that, and it gives you more. And you share that, and it gives you more. It's a cycle. So the more I began to share it, the more it began to feed me. The more I began to share it, the more it began to feed me. They said, you a preacher? I said, not yet. The more I began to share it, the more I began to teach it. Because I wasn't. He told me he was preparing me. It wasn't my season yet. But, you know, anyway, go. Ha. Huh? Eco shatana, ede deko show no mo shatana na ma shiki ande na bosha. Ma shede di ara shiko bosha. I I need about six minutes. I need about six minutes. I need about six minutes. The Holy Ghost is a gift. The Holy Ghost is a gift, and the Bible says, "Ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost." Acts two thirty eight. And if you are born again, you are ready to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit right away. If you had to do one more thing after the new birth to receive the Holy Spirit, then the baptism of the Holy Spirit ceases to be a gift. It becomes a reward. And it's not a reward. It's a gift. You know, people always teach you got to do this, you got to do that. He never said that. It's a gift. The Holy Ghost, he is a gift. Uh, so let me let me hurry up so I can let y'all let y'all because I'm I'm in three different worlds now and I'm trying to stay in this one. Salvation is a gift, healing is a gift, the Holy Ghost is a gift. You know, God didn't ask you to get right; He asked you to accept Him. He didn't ask you to be right; He asked you to accept Him. He asked you; it's a gift. Once you get the gift, He said, "Salvation is a gift, healing is a gift. Receive your healing. You just seen that from Deacon Gary." Receive your healing. Receive the Holy Ghost. He said it's a gift. Receive it. I'm here sitting, waiting, knocking at the door, waiting for you to open up and let me in. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? You don't want to be like the pastor. You don't want to be like the first lady. You don't want to be like everybody. Is that what you're afraid of? Why be afraid? 
Walk in the power of God. Walk in the anointing of God. Walk in the presence of God. It's a gift. Oh, man, I'm, my, I'm, I won't be around my friends. No, probably won't because of the gift. <laughs> It's not lonely at the top. It's only lonely at the top when you don't take nobody. It's a gift. Come on over. The water's fine. Drink. <laughs> Salvation is a gift. Healing is a gift. The Holy Ghost is a gift. You can receive one of these gifts just as quickly as you can the other. As we read in the Acts of the Apostles, we see that the early church believed in getting folks filled with the Holy Ghost as quickly as they did getting them saved or healed. <laughs> As we've already studied in this lesson and, and as I'm teaching, uh, it's there, it's your gift, it's yours for the taking. Let's look at something. I'm gonna share this and I'm, I'm gonna get out of here. I need about six, I, I said six minutes before, but really, uh, I think about six minutes. Canaan is a type of baptism of the Holy Ghost and our rights and privileges in Christ. Canaan. Uh, the children of Israel came out of Egypt, Egypt is, is a type of the world. Uh, then the children of Israel were all baptized because going through the Red Sea was a type of what we call a water baptism. Uh, uh, then the children of Israel, I'm sorry, I see, oh, that's my wife that typed that up there, so I'm trying to read and read, I'm trying to read that and read here at the same time. I'm not that good tonight. <laughs> So Egypt was the type of the world. Then the children of Israel were all baptized because they, they went through the Red Sea, which is a type of water baptism. They also drank of Christ, that rock out of which the water flowed was a type and shadow of Christ. That's Exodus chapter 17, verses 6, and 1 Corinthians 10 and 4. The children of Israel could have gone directly into Canaan land, but because of unbelief and disobedience, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Their descendants did eventually enter in, but the unbelieving Israelites took quite a detour. If you want to detour and take the long way into the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you can. For example, you can detour by waiting unnecessarily at the altar in order to receive the Holy Ghost. You can detour a lot of ways, uh, but you can also come directly in and receive him immediately if you are born again. And that's God's best. The door is open to receive this particular precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and let me share this with you. So let's look at taking a direct route. And I have this in my notes because I didn't know really how to go. For some reason, I just wasn't thinking about 95. So if you want to go from Oklahoma City to Dallas, you can go directly down the highway to get there. Or if you wanted to, you can go by way of St. Louis to Memphis, over to Atlanta, down to New Orleans, over to Houston, and then up to Dallas. You would have to, but you could. So let's say you want to go to Florida. You can actually go to Florida by leaving here. Uh, and going down 81, hitting Tennessee. <laughs> I mean, you're going way too long. Hitting Tennessee, coming down through Tennessee. What is down there after, below Tennessee? Then you got Alabama, and then come on the backside of Georgia, then go in. You know, you can go that way, right, 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 uh, if that's if you want to. Um, and that, so basically what I'm saying is that's the same way we're receiving the Holy Ghost, uh, or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can detour if you want. And you can take the long way for receiving your gifts, receiving your healing, or receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Or you can take the direct route. You know, you can just leave and go directly from Oklahoma City to Dallas. Or you can leave directly from Virginia, go straight down 95, right, directly into Florida. North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida. You ain't got to go way out to Tennessee, come down Bama Way, come in the corner. You ain't got to go You ain't got to go through all that. You can, but you don't have to. You just go straight down 95. Well, that's the same with the Holy Spirit. You can go to detour. You can just receive. It's your call. He hauls, you know, uh, 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 and that's what you got to remember. So you have to get to a place where as you believe God and you receive from God. Look, let me do this. <sighs> I'm going to do this little piece here. I'm, I'm skipping some so I can get you guys out of here. Uh, I appreciate all of you. Thank you guys for being on. Pam said, how many hours does the longer route take? Uh, it's according to where you're going. It's going to take. Well, shucks, Pam. If you take the longer route, I mean, the route that I just talked about going to Florida, that way you're going to come into the panhandle first. Just going from here to the panhandle, if you go around that way, it's about 20 hours, 20 plus hours. Because you got to go through 81, you go through the mountains, and come down Tennessee, come down that way, come around the, yeah. 
That's going to take about, and that's the panhandle. That's not going to bring you into Orlando, Daytona Beach. So the crossover from Orlando, Daytona Beach, that's going to be seven more hours. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good journey. That's 20 plus hours. That's 20 plus hours. Versus leaving my house now to go to Daytona Beach is probably 12 hours. I could probably do it quicker than that because to go to Jacksonville is about 10, 10 and a half from here to Jacksonville. So yeah, 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 that's about right. It's like the Holy Ghost. Why are you going 20 some hours when you just go? So let me... Oh man. So look, let me let me let me share this part. Let me look at let me look at something. Let me look at something. So again, there's some people that always get this warning about being in the flesh. Uh or be careful about getting in the flesh. Uh so in, in one instance, I do understand what they mean by being in the flesh. Uh but however, in another sense, uh you can't get the Holy Ghost but by being in the flesh. Because <laughs> he has to use your vocal cords, he has to use your mouth, he has to open your mouth. Uh, so you're gonna be in the flesh. Matter of fact, everybody who ever got the Holy Ghost was in the flesh. Uh, why? Because we're still in our mortal bodies. So we're in the flesh, period. On the day of Pentecost, Peter quoted Joel's prophecy saying, And it shall come to pass in the last days, God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Simple as that. Acts 2.17. And the apostle Paul said, Know ye not that your body, flesh, is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Which is another reason why there's certain things that we shouldn't do because our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. That's what I alluded to last night or Saturday night when I was talking about uh, uh, certain vices, if you will. Uh, be careful because your body is the temple of God. Your body is the Holy Ghost. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit reside in your body. So you have to be careful how you deal with your body. Just another food for thought. We're going to keep on moving. Uh, so you're going to be in your flesh. And people always say, well, you're, in your, you're going to be in your flesh, but you got to understand how to control your flesh. Uh, we good with that? Uh, let's look at what Jesus had to say as I come out. I come to a close. Jesus had to say in John chapter 14 on this subject. In John 14, verses 17 through 23, Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. That's your body. That's your flesh. Uh, verse 23, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come in unto him and make our bold in him. That's in your flesh. That's in your body. So the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in us in the new birth. Our bodies become his temple. So in that sense, we will receive the Holy Spirit in the flesh too. Right? To receive the Holy Spirit, open your entire being to God with a strong desire toward Him. In simple faith, just receive the gift of the Holy Ghost that God freely offers. Breathe in or drink in of the Spirit of God, and you will be filled with the precious Holy Spirit. Then, as a sign or evidence, excuse me, that you've been filled, utterance in other tongues will be given to you. If you are simple enough in faith and strong enough in courage, you can speak that utterance out immediately, like right now. If you can drink water, you can drink the Holy Spirit right now. Amen. So that's it for this week. Thank you guys for allowing me to finish. Uh, we'll deal next week with the Bible evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Thank you guys for coming on. Thank you for your hearts, your loves, your statements. Thank you for typing in, showing me that you are uh, a part of the, of the service. I always like to see people when you type in talk. I try to catch as much as I can. Thank all of you for being on. Excuse me. Uh, amen. Thank you again to our, our new covenant partners. Covenant partners, those that sow into the ministry, and we believe Luke 6.38, that as you give into the ministry, the Lord will give back to you a good measure, pressed down and shaken together, will he cause men to give back into your bosom. That helps us build our social media platform. That helps us help our churches that we have in India. I think we bought one or two mopads thus far. We have 30, 30 missions over there that we're helping with the children and the orphanages. And that just helps us to, to impact the body of Christ with the kingdom of God. Uh, so I appreciate you. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you, dear. Love you, dear. I appreciate all you guys and the covenant partners one time, a monthly, a dollar, two dollars, five. It don't have to be nothing great. Whatever the Lord puts on your spirit. But I just want to make sure I say thank you. Thank you to my members of Kingdom Expectations. Thank you to our fellowship sons. Thank you for those that follow us on the... Tea Time with Maria broadcast. Thank you for coming on tonight. 
uh, for the Bible study. We appreciate you. Thank you for being a part of our family. You're not distant. You're still a part of our family. We thank you for being a part. I believe I seen Astrid on earlier. We appreciate her. She's always on on the morning. Thank you, Astrid, for coming on tonight. So look, you know how I do. I appreciate all of you guys. I love you to life. You don't even know how much. So as always, we pray the Lord bless you and keep you. We pray the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you. We pray the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. In Jesus' name we pray. We bid you shalom. God bless. Amen. Thank you all for watching. Amen, 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 amen.